Hi, welcome to Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast from BlackBerry. With this series, we're diving into what the future of transportation just might look like. So don't just stand there, get in. My name's Steve Kowski, I'm the editorial director for BlackBerry, and I'm very pleased to be here in the BlackBerry booth at CES 2023 with one of our distinguished partners, and I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Yep, I'm Sterling Prats. I'm the founder and CEO of Car IQ, uh, a payments company for cars. Now, if you've watched this podcast before, you recognize this guy because we talked about a year ago, I think. Yeah. And um, you were coming to the market with something that was very disruptive, and now that's in the market, yeah. and it's, it's a very real offering and it seems like some things have changed. So bring us up to date. Tell us a little bit about what Car IQ is, what it does, and then you know, give us a story of where you, where you are today. Yeah, I mean, I think when we it seems like forever, right? COVID uh, when we first uh, first met, but a lot has changed. You know, back then we had just started integrating with BlackBerry. The concept of how do you drive a payment directly from the car was very new. Uh, in fact, Vito and I were still trying to figure out all the things you could do with it uh, with BlackBerry. And then during that period, we've had time to refine it. You know, we've gone from a period of having hundreds of test vehicles running around making payments with maybe just one fuel provider to now we've done tens of thousands of payments and we have real customers out in the field using it and they're giving us feedback every day. And so we feel like we've moved out of, not only moved out of that early concept period of development, but now we've worked into this real commercial product experience. And, and that's been a big change for us in working with BlackBerry. Well, that's fantastic to hear. And you're featured at, in the BlackBerry booth. And yeah. uh, I think you may have been part of uh, the Ivy Fund. Did, did they also have a, a hand in, in some of the early funding for the company? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when, when the team approached me, they said, hey, we really have this concept of allowing your payments to access the synthetic sensors that we're developing for the car. And as we developed it, they liked it enough where they came back and said, we'd really like to influence your roadmap, so we'd like to invest in you as well. And it turned out to be a great partnership. You know, they really worked well with some of our other investors and, and you're starting to see it in the product now. Well, I would encourage people to go back to that earlier podcast to, to learn about how disruptive this really is. Yeah. But. Um, I have, since we had that first conversation, I've told stories, I've told your stories to other people. <laughs> and, you know, like the impact on, uh, on municipalities yeah. and things like that, that are chasing payments, you know, from one yeah. jurisdiction to another and, and uh, for fleet owners, I think. Yeah. Um, what are some of the use cases that you think are really driving this today? Well, today, I mean, it's really fuel. So we see fuel as really the, the, the bread and butter of the whole thing. You know, when I started the company, the whole concept was, you know, simply cars are driving around looking for things to pay, and it's a really big market. Um, but inside of that market, we realize fuel's 50% of it. But cars are also transacting, or transactions are around the car for tolling, parking, insurance, uh, service and repair. So we kind of see those as the big five. EV charging we see is, is fits into the fuel category. Um, and since then, we've started to move after those categories. So today we've got 21,500 gas stations on the platform. We'll have about 40,000 on the platform by June. We've already got those relationships started. Um, we just started tolling. Uh, it was actually a pretty cool deal. We signed with Vera Mobility. Vera saw this actually at the show last year and said we'd really like those cars connected to all our tolling agencies. So that gives us about 95% of the U.S. Um, and wow. then we're moving after insurance next uh, with ser and service and repair. So those are two of the bigger ticket items that we like. Um, so those, that's the focus right now. Well, it's interesting how world events can play a hand you didn't expect perhaps, but yeah. when uh, Vladimir Putin decided to go into Ukraine and fuel became sort of the biggest yeah. topic in all of our lives, yeah. um, it, it certainly changed uh, uh, or had a huge impact on transportation. Yeah. Um, so I can see how, how priorities shifted toward that. Yeah, uh, it really did, because as soon as gas started hitting $5 per gallon, suddenly the fleets decided they need to get smarter about, uh, about fuel management and cost management. And the biggest challenge they had was they typically have five, maybe 10 credit cards that they use across all their fleets to pay for fuel, tolling, parking, you know, you name it. And that database management was hard for them. 
Um, and also on top of it, they were suffering from fraud. So, and they don't know where the leakage is, but they know it exists. So when we started coming in, we not only could centralize the payments into one location for them, but we also gave them more visibility into the transactions. Um, and because the system's so secure, they now could trust it to eliminate fraud, like things like friendly fraud, uh, man in the middle scenarios, uh, and also the disputes that they have problems with. So that really helped. Well, that's a very interesting and fertile discussion for BlackBerry since we, you know, so much of our IP yeah. has to do with cybersecurity, yeah. fraud prevention, um, and uh, that may be part of the way that that, that works its way into vehicles because yeah. people aren't really worried about their vehicle being hacked yet, yeah. but they do understand, you know, the, the financial target is like, uh, you know, the, the guy they asked, you know, why, why do you rob banks? Yeah. You know, that's where the money is. Yeah. And uh, that, that's very true of cyber crime is a is a, um, a worldwide, you know, underground economy as well. Yeah. And it was one of the things we saw early on. We wanted to stop. We recognize that if you read the quarterly reports for some of the big card providers, they'll tell you openly that there's three to seven percent fraud. And then they'll also tell you on the side there's another four to five percent of friendly fraud that they can't really track. Um, so, for instance, we have scanned customers billing and seen Priuses um, pay for 50 gallons of fuel when it only has a 9 or 11 gallon gas tank. So it kind of makes you wonder. Um, and, and our system now gives the fleet so much more visibility into the transaction, they can eliminate that. So, for instance, when a vehicle now drives into a gas station with us, we automatically know it's there. And not only do we validate the vehicle as who it says it is, but we can also scan its gas tank and we can tell the fleet owner, the bank, and the merchant how big the tank is, how many gallons are in it, but also the maximum risk of the transaction. And then we secure that transaction for them and turn the pump on. And we do that in milliseconds. So for everybody who's concerned security takes too much time, the reality is they don't even feel it, but it's there. This is fantastic. So uh, I've got some new stories to tell, thank you, uh, <laughs> for, the, for the year going forward. Um, what are some of the differences you're observing broadly you just CES last year to CES this year. Yeah, uh, boy, a lot. Um, simply, if you look around, the number of people that are here is easily is exponentially more. Um, all the booths are filled, which we really like. But now the innovations changed. So prior to COVID, and even last year, and and we're to a certain degree we're part of that. Where people had a lot of concepts, or they had a lot of early product. But now you fast forward a year and now these products are a reality, they're more commercialized. If you just look at what we've done with BlackBerry, the whole Ivy platform is very sophisticated, uh, very well thought out. The user interfaces are very easy for someone to navigate. And so time has really allowed the engineers to, to, to create a much better product. And we're seeing that all over the floor now. So I, it feels to me like a lot of the discussions uh, last year were about discovery this year maybe more about doing deals it's about deals yeah and and having real customers using the product you know um, even for us you know we had hundreds of customers prior to this that were using it but they were somewhat friendly now we've got thousands and thousands of customers using it and it they're across a, a broad distribution of types and that feedback is also helping us build a better product well that, that's exciting and uh, and my hope for you is next year you're too busy and too wealthy to take time to talk to me. And I'm okay with that right now. I just want to let you know that no. if, you, if you stay on that kind of a curve, then uh, that's where you might be uh, in CES 2024. Yeah, no, no, I've always enjoyed these conversations and so I, I appreciate it. What is next for Car IQ? Um, this year is really focused on scaling. So we've now signed some of the biggest fleets in the United States who are converting over to our platform. Uh, we have now two auto manufacturers, OEMs, um, that are also adding us to their platform. So we're very focused on integration with these key customers and in scaling. Um, we're also now starting to add merchants. So we've got several really large tier one fuel providers on the platform. We are really close with the, one of the largest EV providers for charging. Um, and we just continue to want to grow that and add that to the customer base. You know, let's, let's talk about uh, EV a little bit and the infrastructure that is kind of holding it back in some ways. What are your perspectives on the ramp of electric vehicles? 
Well, I think it's really good now. I think this, I think they're mainstreaming. So it's not just about Tesla anymore. It's about Rivian and about some of the others that are putting the products out on the market. But they do need more access to EV charging stations. They need to make that more ubiquitous like a fuel station is. And you're starting to see that. You know, there's companies coming on the scene like Link and, and um, ChargePoint who are now spreading out across the country and giving customers more options. You're seeing it at Starbucks, you're seeing Shell stations. Um, Circle K is starting to go after the space as well. So I feel like that type of mainstream thinking will start benefiting the end customer within a year. And EV charging will become more ubiquitous. Um, in terms of car IQ mm -hmm. and creating a, a world where the car is itself a, a, a financial entity that yeah. can do business on our behalf. Um, and I know I'm way oversimplifying. Yeah. But what do you see uh, globally as the adoption? Is it is it mostly North America right now, or or are there pockets elsewhere? No, there's definitely pockets. I mean, just some of the meetings we had this morning are all focused on the EU. So we're having a tremendous amount of interest coming into the EU, um, and primarily. Surprisingly, Italy, Spain, uh, France, um, and, and Sweden, where shipping, transportation are really important. So these fleet operators and fleet management companies want to start simplifying their payment platforms and using us. So we're focused on the U.S. Um, and Canada. We're starting to move into Canada. Um, we want to get that done by first half of the year. And then we're going to start looking at the second half of the year moving into, into Europe. Okay. And that's exciting. Yeah. That's going to keep you pretty busy. Oh, yeah. Um, if you had one or two things to tell the people that are here at the show who are in the industry, uh, either as OEMs or yeah. maybe tier ones, what are some of the insights that you have that you could share with them? Um, that's, a, that's a pretty deep question. <laughs> yeah. um, I would say that a lot of the innovative thoughts that were around a year ago and even up to three years ago are now reality and to take another look. I think people are starting to look at better ways to do things. They want simpler, more secure methods. So payments fits right into that category. Um, and we also think business models are changing. You know, just in our case alone, we went from even a year ago where people said, hey, we'd love to use your platform alongside ours. to now they've come back and said, hey, we'd like to white label it. Can we add your platform inside of ours and create our own branded experience for payments with our customers? Um, and I think that's the big change. You know, the business model and the ability to brand your own experience, I think, is really is really what you're seeing at CES. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ed, I, I can see how that's reverberating in what the automakers are announcing here at the show. Yeah. They're really leaning into personalization and some of those trends, some of those things that your technology is going to be under that white label to make it possible for people. Yeah, and design's changing too. If you look at what Ralph Jills is doing with Chrysler and the, the Ram brand, for instance, or any of the brands under Stellantis, they're using 3D design elements, they're using gaming configuration uh, with virtual reality so you can get the experience before, you, before they actually build it. And I think that's reverberating across the industry. We're, we think about payments, believe it or not, the same way. It's, let's talk about the experience. What does the customer have to do to interact with this or does the vehicle have to do? And then let's walk backwards into the tech it takes to build it. Because um, our goal has been, let's make this as easy as possible. But we're taking cues not so much from Silicon Valley as we are taking cues from designers and stuff like Ralph or others who are doing this. And that's helped us tremendously. Uh, that, that is a brilliant approach and I think it's going to serve you well. Thank you for sharing yeah. some insights with us, Sterling. And um, really appreciate you spending time with us here at CES. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, Steve. Okay, all right. That's the end of our episode for today. If you'd like more information on the topics or our guests, please check out blackberry.com slash podcast. Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast, is available wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest episodes. Thanks for joining us.